the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. We gather today on this 25th Sunday of the Church's Ordinary Time, the church day that we keep in this country as Home Mission Sunday, where we pray particularly for the spread of the Gospel in our own land, in our own time. And we ask for encouragement to live out the gospel message to the best of our ability. Mass this evening is being offered especially for Mariam Varki, the repose of their soul, and for anybody who may be watching uh, at another time on the Sunday morning. Our 8.30 Mass will be offered for all our parishioners and the 10.30 Mass for the well-being of Colin and Felicity Henson. We are invited to be a people of service, a people of love, a peacemakers uh, for the word of God, living out the gospel, letting it shine so that we may be home missionaries in all things. But at times we fail in our responsibilities, times we sin, and we ask the Lord to grant us his mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The godless say to themselves, let us lie in wait for the virtuous man, since he annoys us and opposes our way of life, reproaches us for our breaches of the law, and accuses us of playing false to our upbringing. Let us see if what he says is true. Let us observe what kind of end he will himself will have. If the virtuous man is God's son, God will take his part and rescue him from the clutches of his enemies. Let us test him with cruelty and torture and thus explore this gentleness of his 
and put his endurance to the proof. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, since he will be looked after. We have his word for it. The word of the Lord. The Lord upholds my life. The Lord upholds my life. O oh God, save me by your name. By your power, uphold my cause. O oh God, hear my prayer. Listen to the words of my mouth. The Lord upholds my life. For proud men have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They have no regard for God. The Lord upholds my life. But I have God for my help. The Lord upholds my life. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name, for it is good. The Lord upholds my life. A reading from the letter of St. James. Wherever you find jealousy and ambition, you will find disharmony and wicked things of every kind being done. Whereas the wisdom that comes down from above is essentially something pure. It also makes for peace and is kindly and considerate. It is full of compassion and shows itself by doing good. Nor is there any trace of partiality or hypocrisy in it. Peacemakers, when they work for peace, sow the seeds which will bear fruit in holiness. Where do these wars and battles between yourselves first start? Isn't it precisely in the desires fighting inside your own selves? You want something and you haven't got it. So you are prepared to kill. You have an ambition that you cannot satisfy. So you fight to get your way by force. Why you don't have what you want is because you don't pray for it. When you do pray for it, and don't get it. It is because you have not prayed properly. You have prayed for something to indulge your own desires. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples made their way through Galilee. And he did not want anyone to know, because he was instructing his disciples. He was telling them, The Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men. They will put him to death. And three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he said and were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? They said nothing because they had been arguing which of them was the greatest? So he sat down, called the twelve to him and said, 
If anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms round him and said to them, anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel starts by telling us what has happened just before, uh, after leaving the mountain, which allows us to recognize and realize that just before these passages, we have the transfiguration, where Jesus has taken three of his close friends up the mountain and he was transfigured in their presence. He has come down the mountain and they are making their way through Galilee, heading back to Capernaum, obviously, this is a private time, a time of teaching, and a prophecy of the passion and the resurrection. It is, as it were, a reflection on what we have heard from the Book of Wisdom in our first reading. The fact that there are those who reject and resist the message that Jesus brings and the Book of Wisdom speaks about the godless, those who don't follow the way of God. They are the ones who wait to attack. They are looking to attack the one that annoys, reproaches, accuses, opposing their way of life. The Gospel message would be what they would be rejecting particularly, because it challenges them, challenges them to go deeper, away from the superficial to a deeper relationship with God. And so in the context of our readings today, we can certainly see that Jesus is the virtuous man that the Book of Wisdom relates to. And we can hear the sarcasm of the godless. He will be looked after. We have his word. So that's all right. We can do what we want to him. We can, we can oppress him, torture him, because he'll be looked after. That's all right. He said so. And our psalm echoes the same sorts of themes of attack by the proud and the ruthless. But the virtuous man, the one who follows God's law, says, I have God for my help. The Lord upholds my life. And we are sort of challenged, I suppose, to be that virtuous one, by our own repetition of those words, the Lord upholds my life. And so Jesus is trying to lead his disciples into a deeper relationship with the Father through a deeper knowledge of what his true end will be. But the disciples did not understand they got caught up, as it were, on the execution, as they have done elsewhere in the Gospel. And don't hear the words of uh, victory that come after, when he will rise from the dead three days later. They cannot really recognise, because it's beyond their comprehension, even with Christ's teaching. They can't recognise that Jesus brings a different set, a different type of power to the world. Jesus' power is one of love and service, most especially of love and service to those who cannot give in return. The disciples begin to look for power of greatness. They are arguing on the road which was the greatest of them. Perhaps having heard Jesus say that he was going to die and being uh, recognising that perhaps this is the only way forward, 
They're trying to work out who's going to be the next leader of their group. Well, if he's going to die, well, who's next? Who's the greatest? Jesus' comment to them, his question, what were you arguing about on the road, was hardly necessary. As one of the commentators pointed out, the discussions that they would have been having possibly would have been loud and perhaps a bit heated. Well, I was chosen first. Well, you might have been chosen first, but you trust me with it. Oh, but he took me up the mountain. This was all going on. Perhaps he was a few steps ahead of them, a few steps behind. This wasn't a subtle conversation in whispers because they were trying through their own words and perhaps through, even through their own volume to prove who was the greatest. <coughs> However, Jesus is still trying to teach them. Gospel leadership is one of service. It's not about bullying the top dog and bullying people around. He tries to show this to them. By the example, he says, if you want to be first, you must make yourself last of all and servant of all. He brings the little child in front of them. Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. The same commentator pointed out that often welcome would be taken to be hospitality. If somebody turned up on your doorstep in the Jewish times in late in the evening, even if they were a stranger, you would offer them hospitality and perhaps a room for the night. It was a sense of service. But they would be thinking about adult travellers, and especially, most probably, well-to-do ones. Because being, giving them service and hospitality brings honour and respect to your household. The expectation of giving hospitality to the stranger would be that as they go, they give you a thanks, and as they walk about, do you know what? I stayed with Father Philip the other day, and he was great. And you go to the next town, oh, I know there's a great person in the next town, very hospitable. And then you go to the next town, Ah, oh, we heard about you. you. You go to give good hospitality, building up their honour and respect. But Jesus takes that example of uh, greatness and turns it on its head and says you should welcome a little child. Welcoming a child brings nothing. No thing, nothing on earth, nothing now. Nothing but the honour and respect of God the Father. A child brings no great honour because he is not an adult yet. The lowest of the low, almost, as it were, property in the culture of the time. Waiting to become an adult, waiting to become important. That sense of gospel leadership, of service to those who bring you nothing in return because you are doing it out of love for God in heaven. We celebrate and keep and pray today for home mission on Home Mission Sunday, which the church asks us to keep on the third, se se third weekend, third Sunday of September. And this home mission is spreading the gospel here and now serviced to others in the service of God, very much being the one who is last of all and servant of all, helping others on their journey of faith. This service to others in the service of God brings nothing, nothing now, but does give us the honour and respect, and perhaps if we want to put our words unto God's mouth, as it were, gives his gratitude. It is a challenge to live the gospel. It is a challenge that we have all to embrace, supported by the presence of Christ. He wants us to be faithful disciples, 
sent out into the world, living the gospel, living it out, letting his light shine through us so that others may see. Others may see and get to know Jesus through us, that others may say, well, where did all this come from? And be led to him in his church. Let us ask the Lord to help us to be servants of all and perhaps last of all in all things as we place ourselves at the service of Jesus Christ sent by the Father to set us free, sent into the world to bring us closer to God our Father forever. So let us stand and professing our faith, accepting the gifts of God so that we may share those gifts with others and be at the service of all the world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us, in trust, place our prayers before God our Father, he who upholds our life. For all the members of the church, that we may be strengthened to carry out the work of spreading the gospel, and may remember that we are all called to be missionary disciples of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, for the people of the world, and especially their leaders, that we may all work for peace and know that in doing so we sow the seeds which will bear fruit in holiness. Lord, in your mercy, for all who work to support evangelization in our own country, that they may be encouraged and supported in their ministry by our prayers and that what they are inspired to produce may be a blessing to many. Lord, in your mercy, for the people of our parish community, that we may be able to recognise Christ in all whom we meet and have the courage to share in some form the gospel message. Lord, in your mercy. In a moment of silence, we place our private prayers before the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. 
Let us ask Mary, Our Lady of Walsingham, to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son into the world to bring us the good news. Hear all our prayers and give us the resolve to live that same gospel in our lives, as it is by doing so that we communicate its power through our actions and words. We ask this through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The moment the first collection will be taken and later in the Mass there will be a second collection for the work of the Home Missions uh, of the Bishops at Conference of England and Wales. Um, if the counters take slightly longer today it's because they're counting heads. So uh, don't nod your head too far left and right otherwise they'll miscount. And uh, it's the very first week of our four weeks of the annual Mass count. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So let us stand and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May the Lord has set the sacrifice in my hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith they may, may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvellous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, 
For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. Hosanna in the highest. And we pray the second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of eternal salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, Paul, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And with a wave, let us offer one another the sign of peace. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are unable to join us at church this weekend, may be watching uh, on the video online, I invite you, if you wish, to join me in praying the spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. communion antiphon. You have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes. Let us stand and pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. No guesses for what I'm going to say next. Please do take home and read the newsletter. Uh, we do put some little effort in putting it together and it'd be nice to know that most of you, if not all, take it home and avidly read it and making notes all over calendars and diaries. So it's uh, always useful to know that. Uh, if you happen to be away last week or didn't manage to pick one up, there are some copies of a blue letter which I wrote 
uh, uh, last, uh, issued last weekend, um, talking about some updates on the developments of the property situation, um, the fact that we need to talk about it, and also the fact that we need to repair our churches and the big number that was uh, included therein. Uh, somebody kindly said we should hold more raffles and a tea and coffee. I thought, that's a good start. Doesn't reach half a million pounds in my mind, but it's a good start. But uh, we have some thinking and planning to do, so please do take home a copy of that if you haven't done so yet. Um, as was mentioned in the letter, that uh, very soon um, there will be uh, boards going up marking the presbytery for sale, I say very soon, but I still haven't pulled my finger out, so it won't be this month, I can't imagine, but uh, maybe September or later in October. Um, but in order to do so, we're busy tidying up. Uh, Bernadette, the parish secretary, and I are sorting things out uh, that we may wish to keep and take forward, and there are various things that are still in the presbytery. So um, there's going to be a garden sale, um, in part to say farewell to the presbytery and the presbytery garden, because I know from what people have said, there's been so many events there over the years, uh, especially the summer fates, it'll be sadly missed. Uh, so uh, one last time, uh, it'll be an autumn fate, and we pray for good weather uh, on the first weekend of October. So there'll be something on Saturday afternoon. Um, unfortunately, I can't be in two places at once, and I have to get ready for mass, so we're going to finish It'll be a couple of hours Saturday afternoon and then uh, after the two morning masses, as it were, for tea and coffee on Sunday morning. Um, I mentioned last week that First Communion forms need to be back uh, tomorrow. Well, I'm going to stretch it a bit, give, give people till Tuesday. But also the confirmation forms now see, will soon need to be back and the deadline for that is Monday 27th. So please do, if, if you know someone who has... Uh, children of the right age, encourage them to, uh, to have a look and see if it's the right time for their sacramental preparation. Um, next Friday, the school at St Mary's next door will be holding their annual harvest festival and all the goodies and the tins and the bits and pieces will come flowing through the door and be on display here and um, we'll celebrate it particularly next weekend. But if anybody wishes to contribute uh, items towards the Harvest Festival, they can do so during the week or bring it next weekend. Um, I, I'm not sure how this works, not sure where the display goes, I'm not sure how much it will be. So if I can't move up here because there's this mountain of food, then um, there'll be a pleasant surprise, but uh, we'll, we'll see. So we, we, give, we thank the school for their efforts on that and uh, see what we can do to, to increase and support them. Uh, if you are missing the little reminders about the lockdown, they move to the second page rather than at the top. I got fed up of them at the front. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. <laughs>